it's not like a big moment, but it's a heart-stopping moment. I'm just still struggling a little bit with it. I love it. Good morning, dear writer. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to attempt to finish outlining Act 1 of my novel. At the same time, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the struggles I've been facing so far and some of the decisions I've been making to overcome them. So if that's something that interests you, stick around! First things first, I have to say this. The only reason I'm able to finish Act 1 in this video is because two days ago I figured out the ending of the story. If you're having trouble outlining act by act, bit by bit, this is my biggest advice. Figure out the ending and make sure it's a place you're excited to get your characters to. If you're not in love with it, then it's not your ending. The opening image, scene, and chapter of a story are often what gets changed the most. Many people will tell you to start as close to the conflict as possible. In media race would be ideal, but I think that's shortcut advice. The structure should serve the story, not the other way around. For example, different genres have different expectations. A common structure in murder mysteries is having the horrific crime come first or the moment right after the crime, from the criminal's point of view, and then introducing the MC detective who's about to take on the case. Not all murder mysteries require this structure, of course. If they all followed it, that would be boring. But the truth is, a lot of times it works. Again, it depends on the story. I think it's good to be aware of tropes and trends, but not feel pressured to follow them blindly. A lot of times, when you take a shortcut, you miss the view, and that might be the case for your novel. Of course, no story should start when nothing is happening. Even if the main conflict hasn't begun, the protagonist's life, the part of it you choose to open your story with, should have its own conflict. The best opening image, to me, is a reflection of the entire story. If I don't like the writing there, I won't like it further into the book. If the mood isn't what I'm looking for, I won't want to continue reading. But if it is, then I won't want to put the book down. For most of my stories so far, the opening image has been pretty instinctive. So from the moment I start working on the book, I know where it starts. And this one was no exception. Still, I try not to get too attached to any scene, even the ones that I have since the beginning of beginnings, because it's very likely that things need to change the more I work on this story, the more I get to know it. So, for example, even though the opening image that I have right now is the same I had when I first thought of this story, I did have to make a few changes. The first change I had to make was because the opening scene that I had was too passive, so it was really just an opening image, like it was almost static, there was no action and my protagonist was very passive and I didn't want that to be the case in the beginning of the story. So that brings me to the second thing I had to change 
because when I first attempted to add action into this scene, I did it in the wrongest way possible. Like it didn't have anything to do with my protagonist's character arc. It was just like kind of making that scene interesting, but it just didn't make sense in this story. So I scrapped that and the way I solved this problem was by thinking, okay, there are two things that I want to include in this opening scene. The first one is my character's want, so the thing that they really want to achieve or avoid. And the second thing is my character's flaw, the major flaw, the fatal flaw, the flaw that's going to prevent them from achieving what they want. So once I had these two things in my mind, it was much easier to come up with the action that needed to happen in this scene. And at the moment I'm sorry, that's Bumbo. At the moment I'm really happy with what I came up with and I'm really excited to draft this scene. Again, I'm not too attached to it because if I can improve anything then that's good. Very often the perspectives I choose to explore in the zero draft are not the ones that I keep they're just perspectives that allow me to explore the story from a wider point of view. So perspectives that allow me to see exactly what happened and then I depict it from this one character's point of view. Then we have the hook, which many will tell you should be in the very first sentence, paragraph or at least the first scene. I think it depends on what you define as a hook. Of course the reader should be hooked from the beginning, but not necessarily by this one element which is the main hook. There can be many different elements hooking the reader, and in my opinion, there should be. They should build up throughout the beginning of the story. The intriguing way an object is described, the kind of things the MC takes notice of, the way they speak or interact with something. Anything relevant to the story you're telling, really. So I'd say don't worry too much about dropping the reader into the main conflict if that's not the best fit for your story. Since my story follows two different timelines, the connections between mini hooks can be easily broken. And the way that I think I managed to avoid this was by making sure that when I move from one timeline to the other, so this is timeline one, this is timeline two, the moment I move from one to the other, even though it's not you know, connected by time, it's connected by theme. So, you know, the question that is asked in one timeline, for example, can be answered in the second timeline. And that's what I've been trying to do so far. It's a bit tricky because I have a tendency to spend more time in one timeline than the other. And I still haven't decided if I'm going to do 50-50 or, you know, how I'm going to balance the timelines. But yeah, so far this is the solution I've come up with and it was the main issue in this writing session and I think for now it's fixed, we'll see. In the first part of Act 1, we introduce the protagonist's flawed life and all of the characters who are part of it. Even though we're showing the status quo, the time before we deliver on the promise of the premise, this section must be interesting. This is where a lot of readers put the book down and don't ever think to pick it up again. So it's important to keep them engaged until we reach the catalyst. How do we do this? By showing how the protagonist's flaws are affecting their life. Every area of their life. So when I started brainstorming this story in January, I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to happen in Act 1 because Act 1 is usually the one that's more 
fleshed out in my mind. So, you know, I went into the outline very confident. And then I realized I'm not spending almost any time in Timeline 2. And that was because Timeline 2 was not nearly as developed as Timeline 1. Like, in January, I completely neglected Timeline 2 and I thought I was ready to outline, but when I got to this point, I was like, oh. So I took some time away and I focused solely on Timeline 2. And what happened was that Timeline 2 did become very interesting, but Timeline 1 just went down the hill because of this. Uh, nothing made sense anymore. I had to add characters, I had to remove characters, I had to remove complete subplots because of those characters that suddenly didn't exist. And even the protagonist's motivations changed because of what happened in Timeline 2. So Timeline 2 is the past. So because of what happened before Timeline 1, their motivations changed. So <laughs> this was like this felt kind of like starting anew and right now I'm still struggling with how to balance the two timelines in the setup because the setup is too long in my opinion <laughs> if I have both timelines. <sighs> Yeah, I just I still don't know exactly how to do this. I think in the zero draft I am going to write all of these scenes, but then I might have to come up with a way to, you know, not include them all or blend some of them. Hopefully they will come to me in the zero draft. Yeah, um not all writing sessions are successful and that's okay. Today I'm on a mission, which is to finish outlining Act 1 of my novel. Let's get started. The Catalyst The Door of No Return the world as the protagonist knew it is shattered in a single scene, a single beat. And now they have to figure out what to do about it. Okay, so the catalyst was another scene that came to me instinctively but now that I've been developing the second timeline more and that it's more fleshed out something really interesting happened because now the catalyst is not happening 
in just one timeline, it's also happening in the other timeline. And like, this is just mind blowing to me. I don't know how this happened. It felt like a um, fireworks moment, like epiphany. I'm just happy. I'm happy with this catalyst. I think it's not like it's explosive, you know, it's not, it's not like a big moment, but it's a heart stopping moment. It's like one of those moments when time stops and your heart is just <sighs> and you can't breathe and I just can't wait to write this scene, like, I'm really excited. And the fact that the setup and um, the first part of Act 1 brought me to this, now I'm feeling much more confident in the way things are going, so... Yes! I love it. The debate constitutes the second part of Act 1. The protagonist's world has been rocked out of balance by the catalyst. And they can't just ignore it and go on with their normal lives. They might try, but it won't work. This is the section that will lead the protagonist to enter Act 2 world. No matter how resistant they are, And at this point, the reader must be rooting for them to solve not only the problem brought up by the catalyst, but all of the problems in their life as well. Okay, now the debate is another part that I'm struggling with. Because after the catalyst, my protagonist is just kind of confused and resistant. So they're resisting to the information they got, to what happened basically in the catalyst. But I don't want to have that resistance be uneventful. I'm just still struggling a little bit with it. My main problem right now is that the time frame between the catalyst and the breaking to two. Another thing I'm struggling with is one of the characters I added who I'm not sure if I want to keep because at this moment this character is feeling like a plot... what's the name? plot... plot device and I don't want them to because that's not nice <laughs> this book happens in a small town the story happens in a small town so I want every single character to be relevant and I want it to feel like Every person in this small town, everyone that I mentioned in the book, is more than they seem. Uh, and right now, I don't know who this character is, but like, he's so important for this plot point, for this revelation, or like to raise the stakes. But who are you? <laughs> okay. Um, 
I think I'm gonna have to spend more time on this and um, see if I can come up with something. So the break into two is another scene that I already knew how was going to happen and this is because in January I came up with the main beats for this story and so far they haven't changed but what did change again was that I made this beat happen both in timeline 1 and in timeline 2 so this was my way of connecting the two again having the same beats happen at the same time in one and the other and I think so far this has been working really well and it also offers that cliffhanger because you know I have to move from one to the other when something important happens so yeah I'm excited about that and that completes act one for me if you've reached the end of this video, first of all, thank you so much. I hope it was helpful and that you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely let me know because I worked really hard on it. And yeah, make sure to stay around because next week I'll be sharing how I outlined Act 2. That should be interesting because Act 2 is double the length of Act 1. But we'll see at the time. For now, I hope you have a lovely day. And I'll see you soon. Bye.